Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely in the presence of His Royal Highness, the current Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. After the session, Cabinet Secretary General Dr. Yasser bin Isa Al Nasser issued the following statement. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, congratulated the Supreme Council for Women, headed by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on the Council winning the Honorary Award for Excellence in Caring for Arab Family 2020, which is granted by the Arab Corporate Social Responsibility Network. His Royal Highness hailed the role of the Council in enhancing Bahraini women's contributions and enabling them, which reflected positively on the society's development. The cabinet expressed Bahrain's support of Egypt, led by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, in all the measures it takes to defend its national security and protect its stability in light of the developments in its western borders, affirming that Egypt's security is an integral part of Arab national security. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, then directed to consider expediting the fulfillment of old and late housing requests of residents in different villages and towns, especially those where it is not possible to establish housing projects, and directed the Housing Ministry to take the necessary procedures. In light of the Cabinet review of the plan to improve the environmental conditions in Tubli Bay and Mamir, the Cabinet referred to the Government Executive Committee a study on the possibility of reducing the period of the plan implementation. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning reviewed the Ministry's plan to resolve the bay's pollution caused as a result of the Sewage Treatment Centre. The Cabinet continued the follow-up on the initiatives and effective solutions that guarantee commitment to the conditions and descriptions on workers' housing and discussed a new mechanism to apply the articles on the ministerial resolution regarding workers' housing. The Cabinet approved increasing the endeavours to support the national industries and protect their products from harmful practices in international trade. The Cabinet decided to replace the unified anti-dumping duty and the compensatory and preventative measures for the GCC states and its executive regulations in support of the Council for National Industries. The Cabinet discussed amending existing legal texts to allow the settlement of sports disputes and those concerning athletes, technical, administrative and arbitration teams in clubs and sports organizations and making their provisions compatible with the Olympic Charter and the laws of the International Federation. The Cabinet referred to the Representatives Council a draft law adding a new Article 11 to a municipalities law issued under decree by Law 35 of the year 2001. The Cabinet approved a proposal on the urgent measures the government takes to protect the community from the spread of the coronavirus. The Cabinet approved a draft on the government's response on a proposal regarding the trainees of the Justice Programme. The Cabinet also approved a draft on the government's response and a proposal submitted by the Representatives Council regarding the social affairs aid by, for beneficiary families. The Cabinet was briefed on the outcomes of the Minister of Education's participation in the extraordinary meeting of the Conference of Ministers of Education of Member States at the Air Bureau of Education for the Gulf States. It was also briefed on the outcomes of the 11th OPIC and non-OPIC ministerial meeting and those of the third extraordinary meeting of the GCC Health Ministers on COVID-19. A telephone call was held between the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Commander of the Bruni Armed Forces Commander Hajim Hamad His Highness Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to His Majesty Sultan Hassan Al Bolkia. The two sides also discussed bolstering joint military cooperation and coordination in the training field and exchanging joint exercises or expertise between the BDF and Bruni Armed Forces. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also hailed the friendly relations between the two countries in various fields. 
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fauzi Zaina, received the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, where she expressed appreciation for the Foundation's contributions led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Foundation's Board of Trustees, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. She affirmed the parliamentary support to the Foundation's work and the cooperation between parliamentary diplomacy and humanitarian philanthropical diplomacy. Zain al Hail the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to humanitarian and philanthropic work through outstanding projects that contributed to increasing the kingdom's regional and international status and presented to the world a fine national humanitarian model. Dr. Mustafa Sayyid reviewed the work and projects of the foundation in combating the coronavirus as well as the future projects as part of its humanitarian and national message and specific programs for orphans and widows. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, inaugurated the second phase of the development of the Diraz port, which comes in implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the follow-up of the Executive Committee chaired by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to meet the needs of the people of Diraz. The Minister inspected the developments in the Diraz port with the Representatives Council member, Fatma Abbas, head of the Northern Municipal Council Ahmed Al Kohiji, Municipal Member Badri Ibrahim, Agriculture and Marine Resources Under Secretary Dr. Mbil Mohamed Abu Al Fatih, and the Assistant Under Secretary for Construction Projects and Maintenance at the Ministry Sheikh Mishal bin Mohamed Al Khalifa, where the main task was to establish an administrative offices or administrative offices and their facilities. He noted that the Ministry seeks to implement the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, which reflects the continuous support to develop services provided by the the ministry, especially services directly related to citizens, adding that the port will serve about 120 fishermen with high quality specifications and standards. The minister pointed out that the port has witnessed several development stages, the first of which was completed in May of 2018, aimed at improving and expanding boat lanes for facil and to facilitate the movement of fishermen. He added that the construction of car parks with large capacity has been completed, installation of light lamps, side bricks, the renewal of umbrellas to provide shade and periodic maintenance for their gear and fishing tools. The Northern uh, Governor Ali bin al Sheikh al Asfour participated in the program uh, Tarabot, broadcasted by Bahrain Institute for Political Development, the BIPD, in cooperation with the Ministry of Interior, with more than 625 participants to review the governor's efforts in combating the coronavirus. The governor expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa for the stability Bahrain witnesses in containing the corona pandemic through His Majesty's directives. He recalled the proactive steps and precautionary measures taken by the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in combating uh, this ep epidemic and taking the executive steps of the financial and economic package and its role in promoting reassurance and establishing security and health stability. He noted the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, uh, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Government Executive Committee Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness's role in leading Team Bahrain which contributed greatly in Bahrain being an ex international model in controlling the pandemic. al Asfur expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King's representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for launching the Fina Khair campaign. He also thanked the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, for the efforts made by the Ministry's Directorates, praising all all medical and security personnel and their role in supporting Bahrain's national team, commending the great efforts made by the National Task Force for combating the virus. The governor also hailed the efforts of the Minister of Information and BIPD Board of Trustees Chairman Ali bin Mohammed Romehi and the role of the Institute plays in, promo in promoting democratic awareness in the kingdom. Under the patronage of His Excellency Sheikh Dr. Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees and Executive Director of Isa Cultural Center, the Isa Cultural Center received 100-year-old documents from the American Missionary Hospital, which adds to the kingdom's documented history. More in the following report. 
His Excellency Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees and Executive Director of the Isa Cultural Center, received donated documents that are important historical sources for studying the path of medical and health care in the Kingdom of Bahrain. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. George and the American Mission and all the participants uh, in the hospital uh, for donating uh, all the registrars and documents and manuscripts that uh, belong to, to, the, to the hospital and uh, participating in rewriting the history of Bahrain. These documents, in fact, will be preserved in uh, ISA Cultural Center uh, and to be provided, uh, of course, to be taken care of, first of all, remedy uh, these uh, documents and to be provided for, for uh, researchers to write history of Bahrain. Uh, the researchers, of course, uh, and histor uh, uh, historians, they will, in fact, mention again uh, the American hospital uh, registers and documents and uh, so on. So, in fact, we, we are putting together the Isa Cultural Center and the uh, American Mission rewriting history and they will be, uh, in fact, connected uh, to the new historians. The CEO of the American Mission Hospital, Dr. George Sharyan, extended his sincere thanks to His Majesty the King for his continuous and great support to the health and medical sector. This day is very important for both for the cultural, ISA Cultural Center and for the American Mission Hospital. As you know that uh, the American Mission Hospital was first established in 1900. 1902 was when the first hospital was built. And from then, we've got the historical records of all of the, the births in the hospital, of all of the patients admitted and treated in the hospital. And now, especially because we are in the COVID pandemic, we can look back 1918, 1919 records that showed the number of people who actually came into the hospital with the Spanish flu. So this uh, is a day where we celebrate where all of our historical documents have been presented to the ISA Cultural Center, which should be the place where these records should be forever held for the people of Bahrain. So this is truly uh, an important day where we transfer such important documents to the ISA Cultural Center for, for its storage. Stressing that this is one of the most important indications of His Highness's human spirit to His Majesty which reflects the bright side of Bahrain's history based on love, openness, tolerance, and peaceful coexistence. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Zahra Bakr. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,281 with 629 recoveries, 434 registered new cases, and three deaths. 273 of the new registered cases are of expatriate workers, 158 are contacts of active cases, and three travel-related. The deceased were 88-year-old, a 64-year-old, and a 90-year-old citizen. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions, such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis, along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact, moreover covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing, and avoiding public spaces when possible. In international news, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has recorded 40 new deaths from COVID-19 and 3,393 new cases. The Saudi Health Ministry said today that the Kingdom recorded 4,045 more patients that had recovered from the coronavirus, bringing the total number of recoveries to 105,175. The new COVID-19 related deaths raised the total to 1,307 in the Kingdom. Saudi Arabia has eased its coronavirus lockdown restrictions this week as it seeks to return cash cautiously to normal life amid the ongoing pandemic. Kuwait has recorded 641 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours, raising the total to 40,291. The Kuwaiti Health Ministry announced today that the total recoveries reached 79 percent. According to the Ministry of the New Cases, 383 are Kuwaiti nationals and 258 
for our foreign nationals. Four people who had previously tested positive for the virus have died, raising the death toll to 330. Despite an increase in new cases and some deaths, 530 people confirmed their recovery over the past 24 hours, taking the total number of recoveries to 31,770. Oman saw its highest daily increase after recording 1,605 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours. The health ministry announced today that of the new cases, 921 were foreign nationals and 684 were Omanis. Meanwhile, six people who had previously tested positive for the virus have recovered, raising the death uh, or have uh, passed the raising the death toll to 137, despite an increase in daily cases. The Sultanate continues to see an increase in recoveries as well. Out of the total 31,076 cases, 16,408 people have recovered after an addition eight, additional 856 cases recovered. The health ministry also said 407 people are currently receiving medical care with 100 in the intensive care unit. As countries ease coronavirus restrictions, individuals are urged to continue taking precautionary measures to avoid contracting or spreading the virus. People should continue wearing masks to cover their mouths and noses and avoid crowds and gatherings and maintain social distancing. The Yemeni army prevented an infiltration attempt by the Houthi coup militia in Al-Bayda governorate. The army said that the forces besieged the Houthi groups who infiltrated a site on the Iqania front, killing dozens of Qus and the families of others. The coalition fighters participated in the battles with a series of raids targeting assemblies and mechanisms of Houthi militias in separate areas north of Al-Bayda. Gunmen opened fire at a car belonging to the Afghan Attorney General's office today in eastern Kabul, killing five people inside, including two uh, prosecutors. A Kabul police uh, spokesman said that the driver of the car and two other employees were among those killed. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the attack, but recent violence has spiked in Afghanistan, with most of the attacks claimed by the Daesh group's affiliates in the country. According to a statement from the Attorney General's office, the car was on the way to, uh, its, uh, to the office when it was targeted. The gunman fled the scene and an investigation is underway. Here's Yasmin Ibrahim with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain Old Share Index has closed at 1,278,000.52 points, marking an increase of 3.97 points above the previous closing. This increase was due to the rise in the commercial bank sector, investment sector and services sector. 75 equity transactions took place with a volume of 5,040,654 worth 697,768 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, representing 38.28% of the total value of securities traded. Germany's airline Lufthansa has been dropped from the country's blue chip stock index. Lufthansa was left out of the biggest publicly traded firms after its stock price fell due to a fall from the coronavirus outbreak. The company is losing so much money that it has asked for a government bailout. Being left out means stocks funds no longer need to buy Lufthansa shares to match the index. Logistics and delivery service sectors in Beijing have ramped up to testing for all staff members over the weekend to contain the spread of the virus. More deliver delivery services with e-commerce platforms also plan to join the massive testing across the city. Many delivery staff said that it is essential for the safety of themselves, but also for the catering businesses and customers, as the service is crucial to secure supplies for those who stay at home. The former director of economic and business policy for the mayor of London said that the Chinese economy will be resilient and is expected to do remarkably well with significant growth for the rest of 2020.
but it's important to, and I would expect the economy to recover from this, some in the second quarter and much more strongly in the third and fourth quarter. But it's important to understand by international standards, China's uh, recovery and its economic performance is absolutely outstanding. In April, the um, IMF put out its latest forecast for the world economy, and China was the only major economy which was expected to undergo ma uh, significant growth in 2020, and it will account for the majority of world growth in 2020 to 2021. To be precise, the uh, IMF projected that China will account for 51.2% of world economic growth in 2020 and 2021. That is, China will account for more economic growth than the rest of the world put together. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Yasmin. The coronavirus-induced lockdown has inspired many people to channel their energies into creative projects. In Bosnia, one couple has transformed their business in response to a lack of materials shifting from jewelry design to wooden toys. These cute, stackable wooden toys are the creation of two Sarajevo-based jewelry designers. When the coronavirus pandemic struck, like many, their business was thrown into disarray. As they struggled to source materials such as silver, enamel and stone they had been importing from abroad. So they decided to put their creativity to the test and design a range of wooden toys whilst locked down in their home base studio. They've decided to channel about half a euro from the sale of each toy into a fund they had set up to plant trees. The fund will be used to buy tree seedlings twice a year and encourage people to join a major biannual tree planting drive in the country.